Greetings, I'm Lisa Tucker, and I'm happy to share some quick and easy tips for using Canvas in your classroom. Whether you are a novice or an experienced Canvas user, I hope these tips will help you explore new possibilities. Remember, Canvas can certainly support students during absences, but our focus during the first year of implementation is enhancing in-person learning and maximizing our digital tools. I'm here to support you and I'll be happy to schedule individual teacher or department level trainings at your school as needed. For the purpose of our brief session today, we will focus on these three quick tips. The quiz builder, embedding videos and images, and assignment options. I regret the training cannot be in person today as we had planned, but I hope the screenshots and directions will help you take a deeper dive into Canvas possibilities. First, let's look at the quiz builder options. To create a quiz in your Canvas course, select quizzes from the menu on the left of your Canvas dashboard. Then select the blue plus quiz icon in the upper right hand corner of your page. At this point, you'll be asked to select either the classic quiz feature or the new quiz builder. It's important to note the difference between the two options. The classic quiz feature has multiple response types. You must type the question stem separately. You check your start and stop times carefully and always, always take the quiz in the student preview before assigning it to your class. The features for the classic quiz will really be very intuitive. If you can read and follow the directions on the screen, you won't need much help with this feature. For the purpose of our training today, I'm gonna to focus more on the new quiz builder, which has some exciting new possibilities. One of the favorite new features of the new quiz builder is the enabling of a hotspot quiz type category. Teachers can actually select an image and create a hotspot on which students can select to indicate their answer choice. I will illustrate this today with just a brief map question so that you can see we have a lot of world languages and um, science teachers who are using this for diagrams and academic vocabulary building in their class already. So there are lots of possibilities with the new quiz feature. Let's look at the how to. First, you see that I selected quizzes from my dashboard when I'm in my Canvas course and I was immediately given the option for classic or new quizzes. For today, I'm selecting new quizzes. I'm not going to ask Canvas to remember my choice because I always want to keep my options open. Once you make your selection here in the bubble, then select Submit in blue. Now that we've selected our quiz type, we need to first name the quiz. I've named mine Sample Quiz 1 today. And then set the point value. You can set this as any point value you like. Remember, in our first year of implementation, there is no impact at all with this quiz grade in your actual grade book. Next year, you will have the option to pass grades that you take in Canvas to your new gradebook in Focus. So we're excited about that, but you'll still have autonomy about what grades, if any, 
you want sent to your automatic gradebook. Set your point value. For today, I'm leaving the default settings for assignment group um, and points just as they are, keeping it very simple. Now I need to assign the quiz. I need to decide if this quiz will be assigned to everyone in the course or if I'm selecting this as a differentiation opportunity or an intervention step for certain students. So at this point, you'll have the option to keep it assigned to everyone or you may indicate to which students this quiz is assigned. Next, you'll look at due date and availability dates. It's very important to consider this if you um, are using this um, as a, a secure quiz and you really do not want students to have access to the quiz after they leave your class. It's very important that you set the due date and availability dates and times specifically to your class period. If you're doing this for um, an enhancement or an enrichment project, or if you're just practicing, then this is not crucial. But anytime you want to limit availability for students after they leave your class, it is very important at this point to establish your due date and availability dates and times at, um, at the point where you're setting this up. When you have all of those selections made, you'll choose the blue build icon in the lower right of your screen. Now we're getting to the fun part. Select the blue plus sign that you'll see right in the middle of the page. This is going to open all the possibilities for you to establish question types and start to design your quiz. At this point, you'll select the question type you'd like to add. All of these are very self-explanatory. Think about your purpose in assigning the quiz and what you'd like students to be able to demonstrate mastery with. For the purpose of today, I am choosing only the new feature, uh, the hotspot feature, so that I can demonstrate how you might choose to use a map or a diagram and in order some uh, click answers that would be very helpful in certain circumstances in your classroom. So notice on the insert content pop-up box that I have, I'm going to need to select hotspot in order to use this feature. Now you'll be prompted to add any instructions you'd like for the overall quiz directions. The next item you'll be asked to insert will be your question title. I've simply titled mine US Map. Third, on this particular screen, you'll select Browse. It's important that you already have an image selected um, in my case, I've selected a U.S. map that uh, does not have any state names showing. So make sure you've already selected your image and save that to your desktop or some easy to find folder. That way you'll have an easy upload to the new quiz builder. Now you'll be prompted
Now you'll add the question stem. For my stem and for the purpose of this example, I'm going to say please um, select, click on the map and select the state of Alabama. Your second step on this screenshot is to actually draw the hot spots shape. So you're going to indicate the area where a student can click in order to get a correct answer. I'm choosing the square shape because that's the most easily adaptable to the shape of Alabama as I can get. In certain circumstances, you might need a polygon or a circle. You have some other choices here as you see on the screen. I wanted you to see what it will look like once you've made your selection for the hot spot. Um, as you can see in the green, I selected the square shape and I highlighted as close as I could to the state of Alabama. Let's say I made a mistake and I, I really got too much of Mississippi or I got all of North Florida in there and I, I need to edit it. This part can be very annoying, so I want to share something I've learned um, that will save you a lot of time and headache, I hope. If you make a mistake or you find you need to edit your hotspot, simply go back to the top menu and instead of square, select circle or polygon just to clear your screen. Then go back to your original desired shape and start all over. That seems to reset it. Uh, you can't use your back arrow and once you start clicking away, you'll start drawing squares all over the place that can really be a headache. So I want to save you those steps and a little bit of time. Just go back and choose a different shape selection at the top. Click it once. Go back to your desired shape. You're resetting it. You can start all over. All without leaving your screen. This important step allows you to preview your question so you can see how it will look in the eyes of the student and correct any mistakes before you move forward with completing your quiz. So after you have the question and all the items selected just like you would like, you'll have the ability to select the point value and click done or submit at the bottom of the page. At the top of the page, then you'll have the option to select preview. This will again allow you to see how it looks for the student without leaving your screen or without logging in to a student's account. You have that ability right here within your teacher dashboard. When you're in preview mode or student view at any point in Canvas, you get that beautiful magenta border to remind you that you're no longer a teacher. You, you have lost your teacher controls. You've lost your teacher superpowers. You are now acting as a student, all without leaving your account. So I am um, a student in this particular screen, and I have my question stem that says select the state of Alabama. You'll be able to select and for the purpose of my quiz preview, I wanted to select a wrong answer just to make sure Canvas is going to be grading correctly. All right. So once you make your choice, then you'll use the blue submit button at the top so you can see the automatic scoring just like the students will see it on their side. So again, for the purpose of the preview, I selected a wrong answer. I wanted you to see what the student will see when they make their selection. They'll have that blue, um, blue dot bullseye, and they can change this at any time. They can keep clicking all around the image at will until they select submit. Once they submit, they're not allowed to go back and change their answer. Hooray, I got it wrong. Remember, we were testing to see if Canvas would grade it correctly. 
and you see that I got 0% for selecting Texas instead of Alabama. You also see what the student sees in their points out of total points and the time that they um, took for this particular question. As the teacher, you get that kind of analytic feedback on your Canvas dashboard as well. You can see that Susie Jones took five seconds to answer a particular question, or she spent an inordinate 45 minutes on the same question. So that kind of feedback can be very helpful to inform your instruction and to you know, help provide assessment interventions as needed. Now that we've previewed the quiz, I left the preview by clicking Exit Preview at the bottom right-hand corner of my page. I no longer have the magenta preview border telling me that I'm a student instead of a teacher. So now you see I've returned back to edit mode and I can continue by adding questions to my quiz. Somebody will ask, well, are all of my quiz questions going to have to be hotspots since that's what I selected the first time? No, absolutely not. You can choose a multiple choice. You can choose an essay question. You can change your type as you add different questions to your quiz. To add your questions, you're going to look for the blue plus sign. You see it right in the middle of the page and you'll get your question options again and again you add your stem you add your correct um, choices make sure your directions and questions are clear and then preview each question to make sure you can see what the student will see on their side and there we have it the new quiz builder you'll notice many other features listed at the top of the page which we can explore more in depth at a later time more about reporting, um, setting some of those analytics that I talked to you about, more about moderating the quiz we can explore together, and um, creating item banks that you or your department could use in quizzes. For the record, I need to, to make sure everybody who's viewing this presentation understands we're talking about the Canvas Quiz Builder, not Canvas Mastery Connect. Some of you have friends or um, may even actually teach science or math courses in the secondary level. Those teachers are using Mastery Connect in Canvas for some quarterly assessments. That is not this feature, okay? That is a, a more in-depth and very complicated assessment builder the quiz builder is built entirely in Canvas and is not involved with uh, mastery trackers and all of those things. So we have lots more that we can explore with the quiz builder later, but for now, you know the basics and hopefully later today you can make a sample quiz of your own. For our second quick tip today, we're going to look briefly at embedding images and videos into your Canvas course. To add an image or a video, you can either be on your home page or another assignment page, even a quiz. You're going to look for your specific toolbar. I'm going to take you through the steps and then we'll look at a finished product together. In this example, I'm actually on a home page, all right? I'm actually in a course shell I created for Lynn Kozak called OCSD Secondary ELA Resources. I'm on that page in my Canvas shell and I'm selecting Edit at the top. When I do that, I am given this very intuitive toolbar that you see toward the bottom of my screenshot. In that toolbar, I'm going to select the image icon, which simply looks like a picture, or I can select the 
insert menu. And when I hit insert, I can simply choose um, upload image. I will ch be choosing an image that I already have stored on my computer. For images, JPEG files are preferred. You'll have the best resolution and the best outcome. Um, you can actually manipulate the size of the JPEGs much easier. Embedding a video is very similar to adding images, but the icon is very different. Okay, so we're back at that same toolbar, but instead of choosing insert, I'm going to go to the three vertical dots at the end of that toolbar. I apologize on this screenshot. It's not like um, we're able to show this live. So you're looking for the three vertical dots at the end of the toolbar. When you select those, another menu, a sub menu will pop up and you'll see at the end of that menu something that looks like a cloud. That's your embed icon for videos. You'll simply choose that cloud and follow the screens for uploading. A caution here is to remember that processing for MP4 files, YouTube videos, or other things that you've created or have permission to share, those can take several minutes. Some of you have been concerned about some cloud storage and if you ever run into a, a difficulty there, if you're, you feel like you're running out of space or you get an alert item, um, please, please email me, lisa.tucker at oklusaschools.com and let me know so I can check your account settings. We should not have any problem with storage, but um, you know, depending on your course content and the length of your videos, we, uh, we definitely want to take a look at that. Short videos are best, as you know, both for attention and instruction. We uh, certainly wouldn't want students watching a 45 minute video when they need to have individual practice and opportunities for collaboration and discussion. So short video clips are always best. Uh, break those up, break longer videos up over the course of several days or class periods. Here's an example of an embedded image I added to the home page of the secondary ELA resources course. This is an example of a screenshot where I've embedded a video. This video I had permission uh, from the author to share and it was appropriate for an ESOL endorsement course I was instructing at the time. So I've just embedded that right there, making it easy for my course participants to click and view right there within the screen. Again, this was a very short um, video clip. It did not last longer than five minutes and very quick and easy upload process. Now, last but not least today, we're going to look at some assignment features. We won't cover everything you can do with assignments in Canvas, but we will look at some cool things that can make um, your instruction and engagement with students absolutely paperless, and also some really cool types of feedback you can provide to give individual affirmation to your students as they progress throughout the year. Once you're in your Canvas core shell, select Assignments from the menu on the left. Next, you'll choose the Plus Assignment button in the upper right corner of the page. You'll see that in blue. And then you'll have the option to name your assignment and type your directions. At this point, you'll be able to upload images and files as needed. Just follow the prompts in your toolbar menu. Your toolbar menu looks very much like your Microsoft Word toolbar, so it's very intuitive and easy to use. 
In this example, you can see I titled my assignment Video Reflection. I've given the brief directions of watching the video and providing a, a response to the following question. So I have my question and then very specifically, I'm telling students because for many of them, it's their first time to use Canvas as well. So I'm telling them very specifically how they're going to respond to this assignment. To submit your response, select the blue Start Assignment button in the upper right-hand section of this page. A text box will appear for you to type and submit your response. Hopefully, that could um, assuage any kind of apprehension students have in using the Canvas platform the first time. So I've chosen to make those assignments uh, very specific. This one is paperless, so they're watching the video online. It's less than three minutes long, and then they're going to actually hit Start Assignment and type their text response in a text box. The setting I used was text entry for this submission type. So make sure at, as you scroll to the bottom of your assignment page, you assign your point value. You'll notice I'm giving zero points for mine. Then under um, submission type, you're checking the box for text entry. This will make your submissions paperless. Your grading will be paperless, your submissions will be paperless, and your feedback can be very individualized but paperless also. As you scroll to the bottom, you cannot see it on this screenshot, and I apologize for that, but as you scroll to the bottom, you'll be able to set your due dates and availability dates, just like you did with quizzes. Don't forget to hit Save, the big blue Save button, in the bottom right hand of your page or all of this work will be lost. So please make sure to hit save once you have your settings and your due dates just as you wish. Now that I've created my assignment, I can go back into it and select student view to see how this will look for my students. This is always where I find my typos or any kind of setting mistakes and it gives me a, a great opportunity to edit my work before I publish. You can also notice that beside student view, there is the immersive reader. This is enabled for every student, and when they click this immersive reader within the assignment, they can click with their mouse where they want the on-screen reader to begin, and it will read in English all of the text for them. This is a great benefit to many students who have certain accommodations or special learning needs. This is also very important for English learners who, are, who may be developing their listening skills in English, but their reading skills have not fully developed yet. So the immersive reader can certainly help them with an English voice to support their language learning. After students have begun submitting their assignment to you online through Canvas, then you can open the assignment and select Speed Grader from the right side of your um, dashboard. In that assignment, you'll see Speed Grader indicated with the red arrow there. When you select Speed Grader, all the students who've submitted will show up. You'll be able to look at each of those assigned grades as needed and you may provide audio feedback, you may provide video feedback, or you may simply provide written feedback specifically to that student. After you've assigned the student grade and provided the feedback, whether it's written, video, audio, or attachment, you'll see an attachment icon that looks like a paper clip so you could attach a rubric or something else if you desire, then hit submit. This automatically provides the score and the feedback from the teacher to the student's dashboard 
in Canvas. Now, one important reminder here at the end of our assignment overview, students will never ever see this assignment unless you save it and publish it. The most frequent calls we receive at the Canvas Help Desk are those who say, I've worked so hard to create an interactive assignment and I'm sitting in front of my class and nobody can see it. Well, the assignment's there, the teacher just forgot to publish it. So please don't forget the all important steps of saving and publishing. And at any time during the process, you still have the rights to edit or unpublish as needed. Now that's a very quick overview of some Canvas possibilities. I wish we could have been in person. It's a lot more fun in person, but hopefully one day we'll be in the tech lab together or in the training room at the district complex and we can talk about even more possibilities for Canvas and your classroom. Thank you so much for joining me today. Keep me posted on how I can support you.